Hello, in this lecture we are going to do hex meshing of a project work. So we are given a project and we need to do the hex mesh of this. So first we will have to import the file. If you go to the folder, we have a hex tool test folder. In this we have a hex tool test file. So this is a xt file that is parasolid format. So first we need to import this. So I will select this file then control plus C. We will copy this then go to hypermesh. So first we need to import the file. To import the file we will need to go to the option of import solver deck and here we will have to go to this option import geometry. In this geometry you can select auto detect also it has some options like if you go to the bottom here you will see the parasolid file. So you can also select directly the format or Generally we will keep this as auto select. Here go to this option of browse then paste it control V and enter. So in this way you will get the location of the file. Then click on import. So now you can see the file is imported. If you take a look at the file in this file you can see we have a solid body and we need to do hex meshing of this solid body. If you go to the model, here you can see model tree, model. In the component you can see there are 12 component names. Okay, so first let me change the color. So press shift plus F1. With this you can auto color. So here select component and select everything. Hold down the shift key. Hold down the shift key plus left click and then click on auto color. Now we can have a better view. You can see the red color is a bottom plate and then we have two bigger plate and these plates are connected by these smaller ribs or smaller portions. Similarly these are also connected by here this blue colored part. Similarly on the top these plates are connected by this yellow colored part and these parts are also connected with respect to each other. So the main challenge here is when we do this kind of meshing because this is an assembly of multiple parts we have to make sure that our mesh should be completely connected. Means the meshing of one part should be connected to the meshing of another part. Okay and now since this is a parasolid file we will also have to check the dimensions here. Let's say I will zoom in here press F4. Here select two point and I will turn on the points from here. First point second point. You can see dimension is 1.2 e raised to the power minus 2. So generally what happens is when you export the parasolid file from a CAD solver and once again you import in hypermesh then you need to make sure dimensions are proper. Here you can see the dimensions are very small and generally the parasolid file we have to scale them. So I will go to return. So I will have to scale it up to 1000 value. So this is a industry standard. So if you go because of the unit conversion from mm to meters. So I will go to tools and you will see scale option. Now here go to components and I will select all components. I will hide this. Now we have option of XYZ. I will click on uniform, insert value 1000, press enter and click on scale plus. Then click on return, press F for the fit. Now if I once again check the dimensions here, F4, two points from this first point to second point. This value is 12. Basically the thickness of this plate is 12. It means now it is proper. So after we have understand when you start the hex meshing of this kind of part we have to make sure before doing the hex mesh we do a proper planning. If you take a look at the part from this view let's say from this side view or Let's say from here, you will observe that this part is a symmetric part. Means if I cut it 
from the middle the half portion will be equal to another half so we will take advantage of that and we will do only the mesh of half part and later on we will reflect that mesh to other half part so it will save our time second thing is during the meshing we should always start mesh with the complex part now here you can see these plates are you can see simple parts but these plates are also connected with smaller sections so first we will start mesh with this smaller section part like here this yellow colored part this blue color part again this yellow color part here in the end we will do the meshing of this large plates okay and one more thing is when you do the hex meshing there are some commands that we frequently use for example you go to geometry and you will see this surface edit is very much useful similarly this solid edit and uh, here this solid map is also very useful and also sometimes we use this rolled command and the faces is also very useful so when you do this kind of meshing the time is very important because we have to do the meshing in minimum time so to save our time first uh, what i do i will create some keyboard shortcuts so why we are doing the keyboard shortcuts because it will save our time now to change the keyboard shortcuts in hypermesh uh, here we have a hypermesh 22 version so in any version you will have to go to this preferences and you will see keyboard settings in this keyboard settings there are certain keyboard settings that are that comes preloaded with hypermesh you can see all these options here let me expand this for example let's say i will select d here then it will show that d means hm call display panel okay similarly we have certain keywords using the shift key if i go to shift and i will select f1 you can see it is hm push panel color so let's consider that we are a right handed person our right hand will be used for the mouse and for the left mouse we can use this keyboard a s z x these are very near to our left hand fingers so generally when i do this kind of hex meshing i prefer these keys a s z x for the keyboard shortcuts without the shift so i will select no short shortcut okay okay first uh, Uh, let me do this select shift f1 you can see here we have to insert hm push panel so what i do i will copy this uh, select any of the command then control c open a different uh, notepad i will paste it so it will be very helpful for us to create the keyboard shortcuts so now i will go to no so i will go to no shortcut now let's say for the a i want to create keyword shortcut for the surface edit so we need to insert this command name that is showing here surface edit i will go to notepad we will have to use this keyword hm push panel inside the bracket we need to change them so here insert surface space edit now copy this and now go to this a panel here a in the a keyword a word delete anything and paste it apply now when i press a you can see surface edit command is highlighting similarly for this s keyword i will want solid edit so let's say here i will edit solid edit so i will copy this and here go to s and uh, click on this then delete everything i will delete whatever is inside then paste solid edit apply 
okay so these two commands are here the third command i want to see is solid map so this z should be my solid map so once again i will go to my notepad and uh, this this is my solid map now i will copy this and this z should be my solid map paste and apply and for this x we also need the face command very frequently so if you go to the analysis okay okay tools you will see faces so i will insert the name here this is faces then copy this and here i will go to x and delete whatever inside control v and apply one more command i will i also want to give is ruled command because it will be used many times so i will go to 2d you can see ruled okay for the ruled i will use r keyword which is very simple for the r so here i will insert this is ruled then i will copy this and for the r i will insert okay click on r then paste and apply and okay now let's check our keyword i press a this is surface edit okay then i press s solid edit then z this is solid map x for the faces and r for the rule okay if you want to export these keyword shortcut you can also go to this once again keyboard let's say i will go to file and export so i will paste this location here paste it let's say i will give the name keyboard and enter save them so basically with this export you can directly import this shortcut also and if you want to reset it again you can go to settings and reset okay so i will click okay and if you go to the folder you can see keyboard you can also open this file in the notepad open with notepad so in this notepad you can see you can also change the shortcut from here so click cancel from here once again go back to hypermesh once we are done with the shortcuts what i do because we have earlier discussed that this part is looking a symmetric part i will split the half part to split the half part what i do i will take a mid node to find the mid node what i do press f8 from the keyboard go to this node on the line insert number 3 nodes select this line or any line here create so it will create a node at exact midpoint okay then we need to check the plane also so if you place the part like this okay and then i will select wireframe view to see the nodes you can see this part is symmetric with respect to z axis or y x plane okay so once again go back to the wireframe view press s for the solid edit go to trim with plane here select z axis solid and i will select all the solids so shift plus left click and select everything make sure solid is selected here for the base point i will select this mid node we have selected and click on trim click on return now once again solid view now you can see we have trimmed the part also what i want to do here is in auto i will select mixed okay so now if i go to f5 mask so now if i go to mask f5 and here go to solid i can hide the half part so let's say i will hide this half part mask and shift plus f2 and clear all all the nodes so in this way you can see we have trimmed the half part basically 
so we are going to do the meshing only of this half part and then we are going to reflect it okay so now i can save this file go to file save as model so here let's say this is my hex tool test one give it any name like hex tool test one so you can use this file for your reference and we will continue this in the next lecture